So it's all the power that goes into power plants, whether that's renewable or fossil fuels. The other third, roughly, is used to light and heat and cool buildings. And so our mission has expanded now to all three pieces of the pie. Since the acquisition of Solar City, it gives us the ability to do generation off of rooftops in a clean way, to store that power and address the intermittency that comes along with, uh, with solar so that you can have the power available when you need it to power and light and heat and cool buildings. So that's our storage piece. And then of course, transport. And the biggest piece of transport uh, energy is with private passenger cars. So we started there. The second biggest piece yeah, of transport is with medium haul some. trucking. And so that's why the Tesla truck is not a pickup truck. It's actually a heavy duty truck. And we're really excited to introduce that to the world in a few weeks. But that's how the Tesla mission starts to fit together now, is that we want to address a completely different energy system of clean generation, storage, and transport. And we'll work our way across the transport map in terms of the biggest footprints that we can address to help change the world that way. Um, we also want to enhance the ownership process along the way. And so Johan mentioned he joined us uh, to really address and modernize our service in uh, Europe. And so when he started that process, you could expect to wait weeks, if not months, uh, to get your car fixed. And that, wasn't, uh, that was not acceptable to us. We wanted to change that. And so we started to change that in different ways. And, um, and several of those were developed right here behind us in our Amsterdam service center, which we're really proud of. So today we take cars in and, um, and we have four different lanes or processes those cars can go through. The first is a ludicrous lane. And that, in that lane, we want to try to fix your car before you finish your cup of coffee. And when we start, yeah, yeah it's kind of cool, huh? <laughs> so when we started that, we gave, the, we gave the team the challenge, like, how many cars do you think you could fix before the customer finishes their cup of coffee? And they started that process, and it was like five cars, and then ten cars. And then we started to figure out that we could fix almost 80% of the cars without using a lift. So there's a couple of things that have happened as we've developed this process. So now back in our service centers, we have a ludicrous lane that's for cars that get fixed under 20 minutes. We have a fast lane, which are cars that can get fixed in roughly less than an hour. We have a cat one lane, which is cars that it take one to two hours to get fixed, and the cat two, which is more than two hours. And what we're gonna do is we'll call you, and I'll explain some of this, and you'll see, uh, you'll see part of this um, in a video in a minute. Because we can access your car remotely, we can now diagnose it remotely. Um, and, uh, and we can call you ahead of time and, and get your version of, of what's happening with your car. And then we can determine which of those lanes you'll fit in so we can be predictable when you show up about how long it's gonna take, um, whether you wanna stay here and have a cup of coffee or two or whether you'd like to go on your way. Um, and we've got you now a new fleet of loaners sitting right outside where you check in. So the check-in process takes three minutes or less and we get you in a loaner and get you on your way if you're not gonna hang out. That was the first step. And so now we've got our wait times way down as a result of that first step. But along the way, as we discovered that you don't need to have a lift 80% of the time, you know what that does? That means we can completely change the way automotive service is done. So automotive service today means you go to the car dealer to get it fixed. When we don't have to have a lift to fix your car, that means we can come to you. And so we started to experiment with this in, uh, in the Bay Area over the last six months. We've put now more than uh, 90 mobile service units on the ground. And, um, and now we're handling about 80% of our repairs where we come to you. So we figure out what's wrong with your car. We call you up. We say, hey, look, we need to come fix this. Um, and uh, we're going to do this magically like little elves. We're going to descend on your home or your office. We're going to get it fixed. And you won't even have to raise a finger. That's the idea. And oh, by the way, if you want to come out, we have an espresso bar in the back of our service van and you will make a cup of coffee. It's just a little Tesla quirkiness that we like to toss in. So that is, that's kind of step one. To enhance the ownership process, we want to give you a service experience that is like unlike any other you can get. And we know we're not perfect and we're trying to get better, but we depend on your feedback to help make us better. And you clearly gave us the message that 
Tesla, you've got to make sure that we don't have to wait to get our cars fixed. And so we're, we're looking to improve that um, continuously. We also depend on you as owner advocates. Um, as you may know, we don't do any advertising. The only advertising is that if you completely love your car. That's the only chance we have about it to grow, really. So we're really serious about enhancing this ownership process because our future depends on it. Um, and you are the you are the people that help us grow, and we're super grateful to that for what you've done uh, to help Tesla grow in the Netherlands. And then lastly, uh, we're going to start to do more and more local updates. And you've seen like it's kind of fun when people wake up and say, "Wow, I, my car accelerates faster than it did yesterday," um, and little you know, or my car you know drives itself as we did a couple of years ago. Let me show you what we're doing in service, and this is a little bit what I'm talking about. So we're now. You know, able to do over-the-air updates, that's been historically a really neat thing about Tesla is we make your car better um, over the air. We're now starting to be able to do remote diagnostics, as I mentioned, so we can ping your car and figure out what's wrong with it. The next thing we're going to do is get uh, predictive about that and give you smart alerts. So even things like, hey, you've driven this far on this set of tires. Would you like to come in and get your tires changed? Or we're noticing this about your car. Would you like It's due for a service. Would you like us to come to you and get this serviced? Um, and so those are called smart alerts. And what we want to be able to do is, is let the vehicle self-diagnose uh, and then give you a, a scheduling tool right in the display of the car. So you can say, hey, look, I just want to have a service appointment at this time. Either come to me or I'll come to you. Uh, and you'll be able to schedule from the display and from the app. Um, and that's kind of the next step of where we're going along with mobile service. And the, the idea is, is that we just are trying to make this as seamless and invisible as possible uh, for you as an owner. Um, and uh, we're doing a lot of things as we experiment and get better around this. We will continue to expand capacity, so we're adding service center capacity. One of the nice things about mobile service taking on 80% of the work is that means 80% of the jobs that are in a service center now get removed from that service center. That gives us all the room we need to grow with Model 3, believe it or not. So it's a double, it's really kind of a double benefit, which is super cool. Um, and uh, so not only are we having mobile service centers, but, uh, but uh, we'll have more service center capacity for you. In Amsterdam, that started to turn into some real changes in customer satisfaction. So customer satisfaction has increased 17%, 17 full percentage points since we got, along, uh, we got started in this. And uh, one of the things that you said to us was when I bring the car to you I w and I give you a list of five things to do, I wanna make sure that you do all five. Not four, not three, but five. And so we measure that. We measure fixed right the first time to make sure that we're doing everything that you expect us to do with your car. And that's up full uh, 11 full points. So now we're in the 90s uh, and, uh, and we're getting better. And uh, the days you have to wait for an appointment now is not measured in weeks and months, it's measured in days. So uh, you can get in within three days uh, now to service in Amsterdam. But the great thing is, is we save a chunk of our schedule for same day stuff. So you can, if you've got an issue and you want to get in same day, you can. And so about a third of the, the repairs that we do in Amsterdam are same day repairs. Um, and so you can either schedule within the week or come to us. It's a very different scenario than it was uh, six or nine months ago. Um, and we appreciate your patience and appreciate your feedback because you said you have to fix this and, and we listened to you and took it seriously. So I just want to show you kind of now with pictures more than words what this looks like. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I yeah, thank you. So 
because we're always iterating, we've taken it one step further since we made that video. We didn't think it was really cool to show up to fix an electric vehicle with a combustion van. That really bugged us. <laughs> um, so, our, so some really savvy technicians on our team figured out how to retrofit Model X to, to store all the tooling and parts we needed to do service. And then they figured out how to do it with Model S. And so uh, we're in the process of getting those vehicles approved by the European authority so that we can bring them to the road. So by the time you get mobile service here in the Netherlands, <laughs> it'll be an electric vehicle fixing an electric vehicle, which would be really cool. <laughs> and we heard your feedback on our owner advocate program, our referral program, and several of you said, hey, look, we want a wider selection of prizes. And so, as you know, you used to have to uh, refer 10 to get a pair of $4,000 racked wheels, and now it's two. So, and if you already have arachnids, you can choose other uh, other prizes. And so we heard that feedback. We also heard that you wanted energy-focused awards. So one of the most popular awards to date has been our signature series Powerwall. Um, and, uh, and you'll see more energy-focused awards and then really cool experiences. So, um, you know, one of the fun things about working with Elon is he's doing crazy things with tunnels and rockets and things like that. So you saw like one of the one of the secret levels that we released a few weeks ago was you can come drive the boring machine in the tunnel, um, and uh, we'll have other really cool, only the kind of Tesla experiences you could get uh, as being so as a thank you for being our owner advocates, and we'll continue to release those um, uh, and the secret levels over time as people hit the different levels. And you also, like, you may have seen in your app, when you tap on the treasure chest or the loot box for the referral program, over the past couple of weeks, we released this. People said, I want to know the impact we're having. And so uh, this shows the amount of impact that uh, Tesla owners are having uh, on the world. And so we've, uh, we've reduced about 2.2 billion kilograms of CO2, all of us together as Tesla owners. Um, and in the Netherlands, we've, uh, the Netherlands specific number is 11.3 million kilograms of CO2. So we should give everybody here a hand because you're all making a difference. <laughs> and if you want, you can drill down to your country, you can drill down to your city uh, to see how you're doing uh, versus other, uh, other cities and villages in the Netherlands. Um, it's a really cool feature that we wanted to add. So now I'm going to invite Kim up because Kim is the driving force behind a lot of what happens in the Netherlands. She is truly your advocate. So help me walk, welcome Kim to the stage and she's going to give us some local updates. Thank you. I go even in the Netherlands and I look even at John. Mag jij al the boring machine besturen? Yeah, 100 referrals, John. This guy. <laughs> hey, John! I will see you in my life. So we'll do that together. I'm big in That's right, we'll work something out. Awesome. Awesome. Nou, dus dat, dat was inderdaad uh, echt een, uh, een applausje waard. En als we dan uh, kijken naar uh, alle eigenaren die hier staan. Um, de meeste mensen hier in Nederland die rijden ook meer dan 30.000 kilometer per jaar met hun Tesla. Dus het is ook echt hun, uh, hun hoofdauto. En dat is ook de reden dat wij dus um, aan dat uh, um, hoge uh, aantal kilo's van uh, uitgespaarde CO2 komen. Um, heel veel van die kilometers die uh, laden jullie bij onze superchargers. En superchargers die hebben we ondertussen zo'n uh, team in Nederland. En uh, ik mag hier vandaag een tipje van de sluier oplichten. Uh, er komen er nog veel meer bij. Zelfs uh, twee voor het einde van het jaar. En uh, zijn er hier mensen die op wintersport gaan dit jaar? <lacht> ja, we gaan handen zien. Ja, ja. Nou, we hebben naar u geluisterd allemaal. En um, een van die superchargers uh, hier in Nederland, met name voor de mensen in het noorden, die zal ervoor zorgen dat uw uh, trip richting de wintersport nog beter wordt. Um, ook hebben we ondertussen meer dan uh, 140 uh, destination chargers. En uh, daarvoor uh, hebben we uw hulp ook allemaal nodig. Uh, want u vindt het natuurlijk prettig als u lekker een weekendje weggaat. En uh, u komt in een uh, mooie accommodatie dat u daar een Tesla kunt chargen. En we luisteren naar uw ideeën allemaal. Dus als u ons de feedback geeft van welke bijzondere locaties u graag uw Tesla zou willen laden. 
Dan uh, luisteren wij daarna en dan uh, die meneer die daar staat, even kijken, hij heeft zichzelf verstopt. Die luistert daar daarna, dat is Jelle, dat is uh, de lead van uh, eigenlijk alle charter hier in Europa. Die luistert daar daarna en die zorgt ervoor dat u uh, dus op uw favoriete routes u uw Tesla kunt uh, gaan laden. Um, ondertussen hebben we ook uh, acht winkels. Voor de mensen die het uh, nog niet wisten, we hebben uh, zo'n drie maanden geleden hebben we onze laatste nieuwe store geopend hier in Nederland in uh, Groningen. En ik ben even aan het kijken en um, nou, als u uit het noorden van het land komt, dat is Willem, onze store manager. En uh, ja, die trekt daar inderdaad aan de touwtjes. En dan hebben we uh, vandaag nog een uh, speciale toegift, omdat zoveel mensen aan het vragen waren uh, of dat het een Q&A zou worden vandaag. Um, heeft uh, John besloten dat hij uh, nou twee, drie vragen vanuit de zaal gaat beantwoorden. Boe. Dus um, maak het hele goede vragen. <laughs> en uh, fluister hem eerst in mijn oor en dan uh, ga kijken of hij goed genoeg is. Wie, wie zou er een vraag voor John hebben? Who's got a question? So I'm gonna continue in English now. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi John. Um, there's a lot of people very enthusiastic about Tesla. We just like to know when is our autopilot 2 going to be up to par because that's really what we need. We're totally working hard on it. Uh, it but it doesn't show. It's, it's, um, it's something that, like, I, it, I drive autopilot 2 on the way to work every day. And, and uh, as you probably have known and read, it's a different hardware stack. Com uh, and, and so writing software for that hardware stack is, uh, has been challenging. Um, we've got uh, we've got some really great progress to release to you over the coming quarter, um, or over this the, the quarter that we're in, um, and uh, and I've been I'm part of the testing team, so we uh, we experienced this uh, first, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I can tell you that that the the functionality that I'm experiencing on the test releases is really good, and as you know, then we validate. Uh, through millions of simula simulated miles before we release to the general public. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're releasing these features to ourselves, we're testing and then we're validating and then we'll release to you as it's safe. Um, but safe to say, uh, you will, um, you'll, I think, be pleased where we are um, over the coming weeks and months as we, you know, it's our goal too to bring not only parity between Autopilot 2 and Autopilot 1, but then start to unleash some of the things we can do with the eight cameras and 16 sensors. Hmm. And so we want to not only bring parity, but we then want to start to now move forward. And we've got a plan to do that. But we've been behind. And so I, uh, and so I don't want to make pure promises because the team is working hard. But our number one goal is safety before we release these. Um, and we'll err to the side of caution before releasing Um, even though we know we've been late on some of the stuff, but I, I will tell you, like, I'm super encouraged with what I'm driving now, uh, and I, and I can't wait to get it into your hands. Okay. But it's a fair question. We want to help you, so come come grab us at the end. Absolutely. Yeah, we totally want to help you. Yeah. Exactly. We want to help. Yeah, come grab us. We'll help you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right here. <clears throat> so that's a great question. The question, if you couldn't hear it, was are we working to, uh, to improve the navigation interface and the phone <laughs> interface? Yay! <laughs> so yeah, we have, um, we've been working on our entire navigation engine. And... Um, both with the mapping data quality and with the routing quality, and then, um, uh, and then being able to give you the, the option of doing routing like on your phone and then transfer it to the car, that sort of stuff. So all of that stuff is in the works too. Um, and we've, we've begun releasing uh, into some of the countries that are, uh, it, We've, we've released already some of the early navigation things into some countries, and now we'll be rolling that worldwide. So yeah, look for navigation improvements, data mapping improvements, and then feature improvements um, for routing, uh, trip planning, offline trip planning that you can transfer between the vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that's going to be coming. Um, and one of the more important features that we've been working on um, is a is a feature that really came out of an owner event um, here, 
where folks asked for battery preconditioning in the winter. So if you leave every morning at seven o'clock or whatever, you want to say, hey, look, I'd like my battery warmed up. So I have regeneration, I have long range and that sort of thing. That's another feature we're working on. So all those kinds of features, yeah, are not only have been in the works, but we're now uh, close to release mode on a lot of these. I'm, uh, and um, I'm glad you asked. One more question. Uh. A lot of people are experiencing problems with the Model X and the drive shaft uh, vibrating and uh, we want to know when Tesla will be fixing that for all, all Model X drivers. Yeah, so it's a relative, not believe it or not, the so it's worldwide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so the question was drive shaft uh, and it's a relatively small number of vehicles that were affected by this, but if you have that issue, bring it right in because this is clearly a warranty issue that, that, uh, that we'll fix for you. Um, again, it's a relatively small number of Model Xs. We track this, um, but uh, but if you happen to have that vibration issue, please uh, bring your car to service. We've got the parts to replace uh, and take that take care of that condition for you. Let's have maybe one one more. One more. Oh, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Anybody? Oh, that's a nice anybody? One. Yeah, right up here. Yeah. Safety, believe it. Yeah, so the question is why don't the windows close them by, by themselves? If you happen to leave the car with the windows open, why doesn't it close by itself? Believe it or not, it's a safety regulation meant to save children. So you don't want windows. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, but it, the, things aren't perfect. And so we do have to conform to regulations. And so that's, a, that's one of the things that the safety regulators want to have under human control. And even though you have stop sensors and things like that, they don't want the car doing things automatically that may put occupants in danger. And so as crazy as, as some of these things sound, um, these are very serious regulations that we have to follow. Well, if you need to prove it, we'll have the logs to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can help you with that. Yeah, right here. Wait, what's wrong? I was expecting that question. Much sooner, actually. Thought I was going to get out of here without answering that question. Um, about this time next year. Question. Yeah, about this. So the question was, when can we have the Model Three in this room? <laughs> And a, so our plan is is uh, is about this time next year, so late 2018, to be through the European homologation process and the production ramp, so that we can bring Model Three here to Europe. It's this is obviously really a, the culmination of our mission to bring an electric vehicle that has mass market appeal and pricing, and we want to get there as fast as we can. But I think realistically, expect. Uh, expect to see Model 3 in Europe in the back half of 2018. Um, and uh, we'll invite you all back for the party when it's sitting right here. <laughs> How's that? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming and thank you for supporting Tesla. Um, we really thank you, John. So I guess that was it. We asked the questions about navigation. There's going to be better navigation. We asked the questions about the, um, the vibration of the Model X. A small amount of people are uh, basically going to be, in, you know, cars are involved. We don't think it's a small amount, but he said, come on and fix it. And the third thing is um, autopilot. And there's going to be fantastic autopilot this quarter. Great navigation this quarter and they're going to fix everything and they're going to do a much better job in service so that's cool so far thank you for watching this was the uh, tesla uh, owners social meeting thing